All right, what's going on you guys? JT, PrecisionStriking.com. I know a lot of you out there are struggling to land the right hand, to land that power shot. And there are a number of reasons why this might be. I can relate back to my own experiences, but also in doing a lot of video reviews and seeing it firsthand, I can see exactly why a number of people might be having a hard time landing the right hand. And it might be for one reason or another. So I'm gonna go over these and mostly it's a beginner problem, not necessarily if you're advanced. And hopefully going over these and some ways to fix them can help you in your boxing, can help you pinpoint what your problem might be because it might be one thing and not so much another. So let me go over that and hopefully that helps you fix this problem of not being able to land the right hand. Just before we get into the video, two ways to learn boxing from me. Number one is on my website, precisionstriking.com. You can check out the packages that I have there or the membership on this channel, that's the join button. Links are down in the video description below. All kinds of ways to train, learn boxing from the ground up, training camps, video reviews, it's all down there. All right, let's get into it. All right, the first problem that I see a lot of is reaching with the jab. So let me show you exactly what I'm seeing a lot. A lot of beginners are afraid to get hit. It's natural. In the beginning, this is how you're gonna feel. So what they try to do is send the punch in there to hit while trying to keep the body safe back here. Sort of offense and defense at the same time. The problem is that this doesn't really work. It's not effective. In boxing, you have to commit. You have to take the risk and go in there. You can't be halfway in between both. Of course, there are safety measures that you can use with position and head movement. But you can't be halfway in an attack and halfway out here, you have to commit when you go in. If I'm here reaching like this, mentally I'm back here. Mentally I'm not even thinking about turning my body into a shot. Physically I'm also back here. My hip is like this, right? I don't really feel physically like I can come through with the right hand. Now if you're an experienced boxer, this video is not for experienced boxers, but if you're an experienced boxer, sure you can work a style like that and turn it into the right hand because you know what you're doing. But for a beginner who's halfway in between, this just spells being stuck in your spot. This sort of reaching back here. You have to change your mindset and your position. Here, I wanna be more balanced. Hands up, when I go in, if I'm worried about getting hit, just cover or slip or change my level. And I have to commit to going in. <clears throat> like so. Now in this position, mentally, physically, I can let that right hand go. It's much easier, I'm much more in position. So for beginners who are reaching, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but you have to commit. You have to change your mindset. You have to go from thinking like this to thinking like this. I'm gonna go in, right? And then you're gonna have a much better chance of landing the right hand because mentally, you'll be ready to commit. Physically, you'll be in a better position. You have to make that switch in your mind upstairs and make that switch in your position. All right, second problem a lot of beginners have is that they're not sending their feet in to do the job. They're sending their hands in and their body in, but the feet aren't going with them. And most of boxing, closing the distance, it all comes from the feet. The feet have to, even if I don't move the hands, the feet have to take you there. And so you have to master the footwork for the punches that you're going to throw. For example, watch. One, two. See, I need to bring that back foot in. If I'm leaving it back there, I'm going to start reaching. I'm going to be in a bad position. And then I'm going to have a hard time following up with other punches. Yeah, sure, there are some boxers who can fight with their head down. That's a whole different problem altogether. This is more about bringing your feet with you. Here, or watch. Okay, so when you go in with that right hand, you can't just let the punches go and let the body go. The feet actually have to take you there. You have to work on the footwork. And again, this might be a mental thing. It's not just moving the feet, but mentally deciding, okay, there's my opponent. They're, they're often much further away from you than you think. And you have to mentally commit again, like we talked about in part one, not just position, but the feet have to take you there, right? Not this, 
right? The feet have to take you in, have to take you to where you want to go. So you want to work on one, two, one, one, two. You want to work on that type of footwork to get your feet to take you to exactly where you need to be so that you're not too far away and you can let that right hand go and you can land it. All right, number three. The biggest problem with people who take up the sport of boxing is that they think that once the last punch is thrown in their combo, that that's the end of the attack. But there's always one more move to make. Because what's happening is you're going in there, you're throwing the right hand, and boom, you're getting hit with something coming back. You're paying the price for throwing that right hand. So now you're hesitating to throw it. Because not because you can't land it or can't get there. You don't have the first two problems. It's because every time you throw it, you're getting whacked. And so now you're hesitating and now you're not sure. Now you are afraid to let it go. Now what you have to do is, after that last right hand or the last punch in your combo, you've got to do one more thing. And that's either a step back out, a cover, head movement. Or you can mix them. For example, I step back out and I cover. I throw the right hand, I move my head, and I move, move my feet. I can't stand there. It's not over yet. I need this. I need this. I need this. Right? You need one more thing. And that one more thing has to be as fast as if you were throwing another punch. So if you were to go right hand lead hook, that next move has to be that fast. Right hand cover, right hand dip, right hand pivot has to be just as fast. You need to build exit plans into your boxing, otherwise you're always gonna be getting tagged when you throw the right hand and it's gonna teach you, oh, I better not throw that right hand because every time I do, I get in trouble. So you have to build that habit into your boxing. Number four, the final one. There's probably a lot more, but these are four of the main ones that I came up with that I see. They have a saying in boxing, don't stand still in front of your opponent or don't stand in front of your opponent. When you do, it's easy to time you. It's easy to gauge you. If you're just here, and then you're, you go in for attacks, you're always gonna feel far, because the distance will be obvious of where you're coming from. And the boxer who's defending, or maybe not attacking you, knows exactly what distance you're at, okay? And they can deal with that. It's just that bit easier to deal with you. So this is a little more advanced. You may be standing still in front of your opponent and going in. I guarantee you, every time you stand still in front of your opponent and go in, they are gonna be extra far away. They are gonna be further away than you want them to be. The attack is gonna take a lot of effort and they're gonna be far. It's gonna feel like, whoa, look at them. They're all the way over there. So if you work this little drill, just work it. Okay, don't worry about the results in one week or two weeks. Just work it every day and you're gonna get a feel for getting a little bit closer to your opponent, getting a little bit further from your opponent, adjust, adjusting distance and setting up the place that where you wanna be, okay? So from here, I imagine just a little semicircle. And all I'm gonna do is move left and right and in and out along that semicircle. I may put in little head fakes, foot feints, okay? fake jabs, and here I am, I'm moving. And when I'm moving left and right, I'm also adjusting distance forward and back. So I'm working in this little range. I'm not just here, now. I'm training, okay, I'm here. Wait, oh, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, no, I'm here, oh, I'm here actually. See, I'll show you from the side. Here, oh, I'm here. Okay, now I'm in, no, no. Now I'm in a little closer, oh, I'm out again. A good boxer is really good at adjusting short distance. That short distance change is what's gonna make you deadly. It's not about this and about these big moves. It's about being so quick with little distances, little changes. So when you're there, even just this, even these little back and forth moves, adjustments of distance, make you so hard to hit. Probably the best fighter for that is Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather as well, but Mayweather's more in a stationary, more in a methodical, calculated way. Pacquiao's a little more active with it. 
So you work this little drill, just work it. Have fun with it. Play with that distance. Every day, a couple rounds, ten, five minutes, 10 minutes. You just work it, you work it, you work it. And you're gonna see in a month, a month and a half, all of a sudden there are opportunities for you. Because instead of being there, you're here. Bah, oh, you land that chair. Fake low, fake low, boom. And things will start happening for you. You'll be able to get closer. You'll be able to get to the position you want to be. And then, ha, boom. That's going to help you land the jab. Help you land the jab helps you land the right hand. Helps you set up other shots. So work that little drill. And that's also going to open up some more doors for you to land the right hand. All right, you guys. Hopefully that helps you work through some of the problems you might have with landing the right hand. You might just have one of those problems or two or three of them. Or maybe you had them at one point and now it's fixed for you. You've worked it through and solved it. A lot of it is in the position, in the mindset, in the footwork, getting to the right distance, having the right mindset to commit and go in. You don't have to fix them all at once. Maybe just solve them one at a time, work on one thing. And once you master it, then move on and work on the next. But hopefully this allows you to get in a better position and land that right hand more effectively. All right, you guys, don't forget to check out my website and the membership links below. In the meantime, keep your hands up, chin down, eyes on the prize. Peace.